Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our latest talk. And this is going to be a topic that maybe none of you have thought about, but it's going to be extramental hematopoiesis in beta thalassemia, a forgotten diagnosis and a great mimicker of malignancy. And although many of you don't see all that many cases of beta thalassemia, some of you do, maybe you're in Italy, I thought I would share this with you as a way of thinking about a disease process but also looking at something that you may not uncommonly see in practice, particularly in oncology, that of extramedullary hematopoiesis, which is a gray mimicker. So what we'll do is in this talk, look at some of the key imaging findings in thalassemia, understand the spectrum of involvement of thalassemia in extramedullary hematopoiesis, understand how extramedullary hematopoiesis can simulate other pathologies, including lymphoma, metastasis, and primary lung cancer, to name a few, and understand the role of CT in making the diagnosis of extramedullary hematopoiesis, and again, how it can be a great mimicker. So we talk about the fact that radiology errors are reported up to 30% of patients when they have abnormal imaging findings. While a proportion, maybe 42% are findings that are missed, about 58% is where findings are made, but they're not interpreted correctly. And one of the biggest sources of error is when one process simulates findings in another process. Again, a lot of that is experience. A lot of that is having seen a lot of cases. And that's why I'm bringing this topic, extramedullary hematopoiesis, specifically in thalassemia, and to show you a number of illustrated cases and hope that someday you'll be able to make the diagnosis and this talk will help you. So just a couple points about thalassemia. It's a chronic inherited microcytic anemia characterized by defective hemoglobin synthesis and ineffective erythropoiesis. There are a number of different types, like four types of thalassemia. The radiologic features of beta thalassemia are due in large part to marrow hyperplasia. Markedly expanded marrow space leads to various skeletal manifestations, including involving the spine, skull and facial bones, as well as ribs, extramedular hematopoiesis, Hemosiderosis and colithiasis are among the non-skeletal manifestations of thalassemia. Also noted, it's an inherited multisystemic disorder with skeletal and non-skeletal manifestations. And remember the classic thing from plain films of the skull is hair on end appearance. And we're going to show you some of the classic imaging findings in bone as seen on CT. Now, if I just mentioned the term extramedular hematopoiesis, Besides thalassemia, sickle cell disease, leukemia, diffuse osseous metastatic disease replacing the bone marrow, and myelofibrosis are all possibilities. And we do see more cases of myelofibrosis, so it's something in myelofibrosis to think about as well. Now, some of the factoids with extramedullary hematopoiesis and thalassemia. Typically seen in Mediterranean countries, which is why I mentioned Italy before, it can be classified according to the chain involved, beta thalassemia, deficient synthesis of beta globin, alpha thalassemia, deficient synthesis of alpha globin. Extramedullary hematopoiesis can arise from the pluripotential stem cells throughout the body and involvement of the abdominal viscera, including the liver and spleen and kidneys and adrenals can all occur. And the one we typically see most commonly, and I'll show you some examples, will indeed be the spleen. So if we stick with beta thalassemia, we'll talk about bony changes, we talk about non-bony changes, and that could be extramedullary hematopoiesis, gallbladder disease, and hemosiderosis. This article by Roberts makes the point about extramedullary hematopoiesis occurs when there is either insufficient production or poor quality of the blood elements produced. Insufficient production of blood elements occurs when there is replacement of the bone marrow, most commonly caused by myelofibrosis, diffuse metastasis, and leukemia. So again, you can see it's a patient with a systemic disorder, but again, you don't always have the diagnosis, and that extramedullary hematopoiesis can help with the diagnosis or help with confusion. Uh, in this article in seminars, extramedullary hematopoiesis is a reactive or compensatory mechanism of new uh, and extra marrow blood element formation because of chronically ineffective erythropoiesis. So it's the body's attempt to fix itself. It occurs in paraspinal areas, the spleen, liver, and lymph nodes, 
Although other anatomic sites, even the adrenal, have been reported, physicians need to be aware of the possibility to initiate appropriate diagnostic and treatment interventions. Again, history can be very helpful. If you know the patient has beta thalassemia, you're going to be looking for extra medullary hyaloproesis. If the patient has abdominal pain and weight loss, you'll be looking for any pathology, and perhaps you'll consider it lymphoma. So let's look at some pitfalls. In the chest, it can simulate lymphoma, metastasis, neurogenic tumors, Castleman's disease, and even TB. Again, the article by Roberts, thoracic masses in the chest are frequently associated with thalassemia. They're typically bilateral, smooth surface, soft tissue masses that can contain areas of fat but do not calcify. The presence of fat attenuation within the masses most likely represents non-active lesions, whereas enhancement is more likely to be present in active hemopoietic masses, okay? And the paravertebral areas are the most common areas. The paravertebral areas are the ones where you get these bilobe masses. Maybe you're thinking about a neurogenic tumor. Maybe you're thinking about lymphoma. Those are all possibilities. You can see paraspinal hemopoietic tissue extending into the central canal, and neurologic symptoms of cord compression, in fact, can even occur. And here's just a nice example. Look at those lobulated masses on the coronal and the 3D coronal bilateral. They almost look symmetric, though not exactly, but you can see it's very extensive, and you could see why you would think about lymphoma. Another example, here's four different levels. There's extra medullary hematopoiesis here by the ribs, in the paraspinal regions here, and here as well, and here. And you can see it's not as bulky as the last case, but it's extensive. And again, the lobulations, again, here's another example with the paraspinal involvement, indeed very impressive. So you can get a feel of the appearances. They can be very large. Look at this case. This really was thought to be lymphoma at first. Look at the size of the lobular masses. I love to quiz people on this case because they will go through lymphoma, neurogenic tumors, metastasis, and that's all reasonable. One thing you notice, especially in the last set of images, there's something with the bone that looks abnormal. Now, that could be myelofibrosis. It can be thalassemia. But you know there's bone involvement in large masses, but it still could be lymphoma, but if you're not thinking about that possibility. Here it is with cinematic rendering, beautifully showing you the extra medullary hematopoiesis, the large paraspinal masses, very nicely shown on the cinematic images. And here's that same patient again, the large lobular masses pushing against the bone, uh, the attenuation, very similar to the kidneys, for example, when you're looking at texture mapping. But in that case, look what happens when you look at the sternum and the ribs. You see that mottled appearance? The marrow is expanded and the cortices are thinned, and you kind of have this grainy type appearance. It's really a beautiful example. Look at the ribs bilaterally. Here in this massage view, you can see the rib involvement. You also can see the large paraspinal components that are present. And again, take a look at the bone. That's very helpful. Here's another set of images. You're looking at the expansion of the marrow in the sternum, the textural changes in the uh, thoracic spine and cervical spine. So it's involving all the bony structures. And here it is again, some of the coarseness and expansion in the patient's ribs, very nicely seen. Now, in terms of skeletal manifestations, as I showed you some examples, what you're really visualizing is expansion of the medulla, thinning of the cortical bone, and resorption of the cancellous bone with widening of the diploic spaces, for example, in the skull. The ribs most commonly are most commonly involved, followed by vertebral bodies, skull, and other bones. And I showed you the last example was just a beautiful example of the spine, as well as rib involvement. Now, here's a patient with beta thalassemia. You can see some of the coarse changes in the spine, the coarse trabeculations, perhaps not as dramatic as the prior case, but you also, at the L4-5 level, see the extra medullary hematopoiesis, nicely shown there, looking like nodes. You also see it very nicely in the patient's sacrum at that level as well. 
And again, here's that rib expansion, the sternal involvement, again, best shown when you're looking at texture mapping of the patient's ribs. And here it is again on the sagittal view. Just a really, really nice example. Now, one of the other areas where you can get infiltration is the perinephric spaces. Now, we talk about perinephric spaces as one of the really good uh, quiz cases. We've seen a bunch of cases recently of Ernheim Chester, also retroperitoneal fibrosis and lymphoma. You can see liposarcoma, but that usually is unilateral. Metastasis is usually lateral, but that's usually a dominant mass in the pararenal space, not diffuse infiltration. And then a hematoma, again, usually unilateral. Here's a beautiful example. You can see the kidneys. This is non-contrast, obviously, but the lobulations around the kidney could be Ernheim Chester, could indeed be lymphoma. It looks like nodes in the mesentery. This patient has extramedullary hematopoiesis with infiltration of the perirenal spaces and infiltration of some of the nodes as well. And here's another example. You can see in this case is even more impressive, particularly on the right side. And it almost looks like an infiltrating tumor. You can see why this case was initially thought to represent lymphoma infiltration of the kidneys, the perirenal spaces, and mesenteric adenopathy. Again, a very nice mimicker of other diseases. Now, you can see presacral masses in extramedullary hematopoiesis. I showed you an example before how it looks in the sagittal view, but again, can be confused with lymphoma, extraadrenal myelipoma, though that usually is fatty density, radiation therapy related changes, sarcomas when they're large, chordomas when the extramedullary hematopoiesis is very large, but usually chordomas you have bone destruction, same thing with sarcomas, you're not gonna have that same problem typically, and we'll at least mention chronic osteomyelitis. Here's a patient with beta thalassemia and paraspinal masses, and I'm showing you this one to look at the sacrum. You could see why you could think of about a presacral mass, rectal cancer, recurrent rectal cancer. You could think about lymphoma. You could think about chordoma. You could think about sarcoma. But then you look, the patient has all of these changes also in the chest, particularly in the paraspinal regions, and you recognize you are dealing with a great mimicker, extramedullary hematopoiesis in a patient with beta thalassemia. Now, an enlarged spleen is common in beta thalassemia, but can be seen obviously in many conditions. CLL gives you the largest spleen. You can see a large spleen in sarcoid, though patients often have focal lesions. Mononucleosis gives you a humongous spleen. Younger patient, it can spontaneously bleed. Portal hypertension gives you a big spleen, but then of course you see varices and the liver changes. And of course metastases can give you a large spleen like lymphoma, we talk about infiltration. Most meds don't give you infiltration, they give you more focal lesions. Here's a great case of a patient with beta thalassemia, a large spleen, but also cirrhosis of the liver, extramedullary hematopoiesis in the paraspinal regions. This patient eventually had a splenectomy and there was extramedullary hematopoiesis within the spleen. And here's the patient with more images showing you the multiple sites of extramedullary hematopoiesis. So perhaps if you're making the diagnosis of extramedullary hematopoiesis and you see a very large spleen, at least suggest that's one of the possibilities. Look at this patient. This spleen is really large. Um, this patient was having symptoms, particularly left upper quadrant pain. They decided to do a splenectomy. At pathology, I read the path report. The path report said big spleen, extramedullary hematopoiesis. So really what you had was expansion of the medullary cavity in bone as well as in the spleen. So you see some of the bony changes in the pelvis. You see some of the textural changes in the spine. But this whole spleen was enlarged because of extramedullary hematopoiesis. And again, here's that same patient just to show you very nicely the changes in the bone, the coarseness and expansion of the uh, medullary components and the presacral masses, which were extramedullary hematopoiesis. And again, very nicely shown in this example. Now, I've now gone through several different points and let me just review them with you. Extramedullary hematopoiesis and thalassemia can present as mediastinal masses simulating other pathologies. Periodic masses in the abdominal 
uh, areas can simulate adenopathy, and large organs like the liver or spleen can simulate malignancy when it's simply extramedullary hematopoiesis causing infiltration. And of course, the bony changes can simulate many other pathologies, including malignancies. So extramedullary hematopoiesis, when you think about thalassemia, it's very easy, but you can see it with many other conditions. So with that, I hope I've given you some good information and hope you find it helpful. And... Have a great day. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website, ctss.com, for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.